You know, the thing about kite fishing, especially in these conditions, when you've got a little bit of a breeze and a little bit of a chop, it's not just set it and forget it. You know, I've said this so many times in the past and it's super important. You really gotta stay on top of it. Whoever's fishing that kite has gotta be paying attention to those kite baits. We're constantly making adjustments. You know, I'm fishing all three baits. It's okay for that bait not to be sitting right on the surface, but certainly you don't want it to be up in the air. You know, obviously that doesn't do anybody any good. So, you know, you're always gonna either let out a little bit of line or maybe reel up a few cranks. You want that bait within the top three, four feet of the surface. Okay, it's okay for him to be swimming right below the surface. And as that kite fluctuates with the breeze, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down. Again, these conditions are, you know, they're changing. They're constantly changing here. So you really have to stay on top of it. You can't fish flat lines and kite lines. One person can't do it all. It's really a team effort. You know, your dedicated kite guy has gotta be on top of it the entire time. dolphin, little crazy dolphin on the flat line. Beautiful. Little chop. Wind picked up to a solid 15 to 20 here. Look at the colors on his fins, huh? Gorgeous. I'm gonna come down the rail here. Right underneath these kite lines. I'm ready when Got, you are. All right. He's almost ready. Almost ready. Yep, there he goes, screaming out there. Coming right up back up to the bow. Yep, yep. Oh, that was awesome, dude. All right, Carlos, I'm gonna come under one more time and I think we're gonna be ready to stick him. He's a frisky guy, huh? Yep, I'm gonna come all the way back. Just taking my time. We're just fishing, as I mentioned, 16 pound diamond, diamond line on our spinners. And the reason we fish 16 is to get maximum line capacity on the spinning reels. This way, if you double up on sails or a big king or wahoo, you don't have to go chasing them. You've got plenty of line capacity. All right. This is it. We're going to put an end to this and get this guy in the box. There we go. Wait for the shot right in the head. There you go. Nice job. Woo! Right there. Not a bad first fish on a flat line. Oh, yeah. She inhaled that. Inhaled that pilchard. Now, I can't stress enough, that's what kite fishing is. All about the details. It's about maximizing your presentation, 360 degrees around the boat. We're also fishing some deep baits as well, okay? Because it doesn't take much. You know, every fish could make a really, really big difference. And if you're new to this, you know what, don't get don't get scared, you know, don't shy away from kite fishing, but start slow, start small, you know, fly one kite with one bait and get that dialed in. Figure out the mechanics of it all. Figure out how to get your kites to bank to the left or the bank to the right by adding the split shots on the corners. You know, figure out how to dial in that kite with the bridle in order to get it to fly higher or lower on the horizon. There's so much to it, it's a science, it really is. And the better that you get at it, the more successful you're gonna be because every day out on the water kite fishing is different. No two days are alike, everybody will tell you that. So start slow, perfect the one bait, bump it up to two baits, three baits, and then move on to a second kite and eventually, potentially even a third kite. You know, the top teams, the top guys are fishing three baits off of three kites. And while it may seem intimidating, you can do it as well. It's just a, you know, a learning process, a little bit at a time, but stay on top of it. And remember, what you put into it is what you're gonna get out of it.